morning, everyone. This is Tractor Man 44. I'm just sitting around leisurely uh, replying to some comments that I got on uh, my latest little little video, you know, concerning my channel. And I think old Sneelock, old Sneelock's workshop, he commented, you know, you don't you don't pick your projects. Sometimes your projects pick you, you know. And this is a perfect prime example. Uh, that was old Sneelock's quote, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I agreed with him. I just told him, yeah, that, that is exactly true. Uh, the only thing that changes sometimes is your priorities. Well, my priority today was kicking back, relaxing, you know, making ashes and a little bit of smoke come out of the chimney, uh, enjoying the warmth of the fireplace and the little lady sipping a cup of coffee and uh, petting the dog. And my phone rang. <laughs> it was It's a cousin of mine. I mean, she's a, she's a single lady, a uh, good old gal, you know. But she ain't that old. She ain't nowhere near as old as me. But um, my danger furnace is out. So again, uh, I had not picked this project for the day, but uh, this project picked me. So uh, I bowed to old Sneelock and his, uh, his intuitive comment there. That's a real good way of putting it into words. But at any rate, I had to go out there the other day. Uh, her furnace didn't come on, you know, and I couldn't find anything wrong with it. By the time I got there, everything had cooled down and and uh, I just turned the thermostat back on or had her turn it on and, and it came up and ran fine. I went ahead and cycled it uh, four or five times down there, you know, checking all the circuits with the Ampro. Everything checked out fine, no problem whatsoever. It's a 15 kW uh, vanilla flavored uh, York, York uh, forced air furnace. And uh, it, uh, nothing was apparent, you know, I thought maybe a, a relay contact is stuck or something like that, I don't know. You can't just go changing parts willy nilly. So I told her, I said, well, I really didn't fix anything, so you'll see me again in a few days or a few weeks, or maybe if we're real lucky, a couple years down the road, you know, and I'll be too old to come out, somebody else have to do it. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, sure enough, true to farm, I don't know, less than a week, I don't even remember how long ago it was, uh, true to farm, uh, uh, I'm on my way back out there, and we kind of did a little troubleshooting on the phone, and uh, she hears it humming inside there, and so we think that the blower motor is, is uh, the bearings are probably bad. She indicated that when she shut it off, she could hear a little bit of a squeal or a little bit of a squeak, you know, which is an indication of a, a failing bearing, uh, which did not have that sound the other day when I was there. Of course, you know, when you go to the dentist, your tooth quits hurt. <laughs> you know, your bunions don't hurt when you go to that gum foot doctor. Well, you know, maybe that's an exception. They usually do. But at any rate, I'm on my way out to my cousin's house. I got a pile of uh, used 230 volt motors in the back. I'll see if I can make one of them work and uh, I'll be back to y'all later. So anyway, I made it to my cousin's house. We popped the front of the front of the furnace open. She can kind of take a look at the nest of spaghetti in there. We don't have to worry ourselves with none of that simply because all that stuff's functioning right. This is the, I thought possibly one of the relays had stuck contact, but that, that's not the case. So anyway, I took the liberty to pull the, the screws and stuff out in advance. This is the blower assembly just ready to slide right out. They're typically on, on a set of little railroad rails up underneath there, little flanges, and they're usually held in for by three to possibly as many as five screws, and then you just slide the blower out. I gotta set the camera well, down. We got it apart and uh, taking a 5 16 set screw out of there, put a little WD-40 around that. Um, we need to break that shaft loose, but in the meantime, take a listen to our, uh, our turkey call. Well, that really wasn't a turkey call, but that's an indication that the, uh, the bearings are totally dry. And I grabbed the shaft and I can actually uh, move the shaft uh, laterally so that uh, there's definitely wear in the bearing. So motor is coming out. That's all there is to it, at least removal anyway. So now we got to take this belly band off of here. It's on high speed. Have to pull this belly band off here and get that back on a replacement motor. And then uh, go about the business of uh, making it work. Three, uh, the three mounting, the mounting brackets back onto the belly band. This one here's a good motor because it's reversible. If it goes the wrong direction, we just snip these wires and connect orange and uh, uh, purple opposite the way they are, and it'll go the other direction. And uh, time to slide it right down into the shaft. Actually, right down into the. Um, Whoops, forgot a washer. All good mechanics have parts left over, you know. That's why I ain't so good. I try not to have any left over.
Yeah, this is a little different than butchering beef for pigs. Now we'll slide that blower assembly reasonably straight in the blower compartment or in the in the uh, in the fan housing. You want to try to get equal distance on those um, inlet flutes or whatever you want to call them, and then uh, put the set screw back in and tighten it down. Of course, you got to find the flat spot on the. Get the set screw back in there. Line up with a flat spot. Get her pretty close to ready to tighten down, then we'll double check because it slips a little bit on you. We're close enough. If you run that blower wheel too far out on the uh, on that long shaft, well it, it gives you uneven airflow on the inlet sides of the uh, the blower assembly. Plus it puts undue strain on that leading bearing because that bearing is designed to carry so much weight and the farther out on that shaft you install it the more excessive that weight becomes which results in a premature bearing failure once again no squeaking now we got to do is figure out the wiring now this one here is actually going to wire quite easily we got two wires for the capacitor so we don't have to power the capacitor anymore with the uh, with the purple wire this used to be the winding feed from up on the uh, up on the relay so a uh, single speed motor all we're going to do is take those and supply 240 volts directly to the winding. Capacitor taken care of. This is our reversing wires. I'm not going to worry about that until we fire it up and see if it's going the correct direction. If it's wrong, then we'll reverse it, but not before. And the worst thing happens, they'll, they'll just bounce around in there and they might hit the cabinet and, and a spark or something, you know. Don't or wonder. blow a fuse or something like that, but most of the time they'll just sit right here. Mm -hmm. Old Gator's probably watching this and disapproving of my choice of zip ties, but hey Gator, they were free, man. Like I say, if they're free, they're for me. Now after we determine rotation is correct or not, we'll zip tie these to make sure they won't get sucked in by the air into the blower wheel and then uh, shard out and give probably... For those of you that want to know, Here's our little uh, railroad track that I was telling you about right here, and another one on the other side. The flange on that blower assembly would just slide on those tracks or those rails, slide right in and latch in place with a few screws. I don't know why these guys build this stuff so tight. You gotta be so careful. I mean, there's not a... Oh, that's what's going on. Got the wrong nut runner in there. Thought that sounded weird. No big deal. Now this particular one here, we got two of them pretty tough to get to, so it's gonna be a little, little cussing and carrying on on this one. And as luck would have it, I have to, uh, I have to cut and, and uh, splice these wires uh, the opposite coloration because uh, it did definitely go the wrong direction. So uh, that's a, the first bit of bad luck this morning. Okay, I did have to uh, reverse the windings in there. I've sent her upstairs, turned thermostat up, and here you can hear the, the blower motor starting up. The blower motor is uh, powered through the first stage sequencer right here. Whenever the uh, thermostat calls for heat, it sends 24 volts to the control coils on that sequencer bank right there. Uh, the very first step is M1 to M2, and that typically brings on the blower assembly and um, uh, the blower assembly and the first stage element. Then the second is M2, M3 to M4, which is a set of contacts under that. And then the third element will be over here on the second stack of the sequencers, and that'll bring on the third element. And here's our three five kilowatt elements up here, uh, across the top, there in the middle, and over here on the top on the other side. So to verify that here in a few minutes, because it does take a minute or a minute and a half for the heaters in those clicks on switches to warm up and close the circuits, it takes a, a little bit of time for all the elements to become energized, but we'll check those. I don't know if you guys want to know what I'm talking about or what I'm doing, but uh, this is a 15 kW, which means there's three elements, three 5,000 watt elements in it. And to verify that all of them stage on, we pick out an element, which is right here between this one and this one. There should be 240 volts across it. And if there is, and if the controller is pulled in, we will draw amperage through the ammeter. And you can see we're drawing 20.8 uh, 20 amps across that element. 
we do the second thing with our, that with the second element over here. Actually, that was the third element. And then this one here. Should be able to get in here and read that voltage or amperage. There we go. We have 20.9 amps on that element. So that stage is, is energized. And then the third element is right down here. And we have 20.6 uh, amps on that particular element. So all the staging sequences are staging up the way they're supposed to. The blower's on and running. We should have a specific temperature rise across those heat elements, and uh, everything should be copacetic. So at any rate, I think we can uh, I think we can call this one a success. Made my cousin happy anyway. Well, we got the cousin's furnace going. Uh, I took a pile of used motors and had one new motor on the shelf, and I'll be darned that one brand new motor is the uh, the one that was. Uh, close enough uh, to where it worked just fine far so before I got done with that my son had called me from uh, over at his house the one we're doing the hardwood far and floor far and he asked me what I had planned for the afternoon well you know what that usually means well when my son asks that question typically what he means is uh, well if you're not doing anything in particular come on over I got a, I got some more got some more uh, stuff to play with you know so, well, I knew he wanted to put some ceramic tile in the entryway, so uh, I went on over that. As a matter of fact, I just left his house a few minutes ago. Uh, he was in the process of putting that Detra, uh, that new fancy Detra underlayment uh, on the entryway. So I helped him finish that up, you know, and I put the, uh, the, the mastic down or whatever you want to call it, the uh, cement, the special cement that attaches that uh, Detra to the subfloor. And then tomorrow, hopefully it'll be dry enough where we can go ahead and put the ceramic tile on on top of that and then went ahead and or started to finish up just a little bit more of the hardwood uh, over by the hearth we had left a uh, a little spot over by the either side of the hearth that um, still needed to be done simply because it was easier for us to take off and run with full rows you know if we uh, well you know you know what I mean but at any rate uh, again old Sneelock <laughs> Sneelock hit the nail right on the head man this morning whenever uh, whenever he said that uh, our projects choose us. I had two projects that was kind of unexpected, you know, that cropped up today. Uh, however, in the meantime, we had the opportunity. I met my, my lovely bride in town, and uh, we had a Mexican lunch at the um, local, one of the local Mexican restaurants, La Pachanga. Hot dang boy, that was good too. So at any rate, I'm back home. I'm back in the truck into the shed, and uh, like I always say, this tractor man 44 and I am out of here.